Hello chess lovers, Sonan here and in this video I want to share with you a fantastic game played between two Latvian chess players. On the white side is Nikolai Katishonak and his opponent is Horis Gulbis. The game was played in 1989 and this was a correspondence game. Katishonak opened up with knight f3 to which Gulbis answered with knight f6, c4 e6, d4 d5. With a transposition of moves we reached queen's gambit declined three knights variation. An exchange on f6 followed, e3 black castled kingside, rook c1, of course all this is a standard theory seen many times, where black is establishing a very solid defensive position. h4. Uh, in here usually white is playing b4 and then a4 b5, but in this game white decided to try his luck by advancing on the kingside, rook e8 g4, while h3 c8 diagonal is blocked by black knight, this g pawn is also stepping forward. Knight f8, not the strongest defensive move. Look, uh, white king is still stuck in the center of the board, and in view of that fact, uh, trying to open up the position as soon as possible, for example by playing c5 by striking in the center is a better idea. Also Stockfish suggests g6, but in this game we see knight f8, which is not a strong defense, and now we see a pawn sacrifice with the help of which white is managing to open up the h and g files, which will help him to put pressure on black king. Queen goes on f3, already we have a direct mating threat and bishop f6, a mistake which steps into a beautiful tactical shot. Developing the light squared bishop and protecting the pawn is better. If queen g3 then bishop f6. If here, then c5. But in the game we see bishop f6 and now let's see what's the problem with it. Here Katishonek landed a very beautiful punch and he played rook h8 check. How do you like this beauty, guys? The move is simple and asks itself to be played. The rook is of course untouchable because of this deadly fork and if bishop takes h8 then you can get checkmated. That's why all black could do was to play king g7, and we have queen h1 with a direct mating threat. Bishop takes e5, black is getting rid of that active knight, and at the same time is trying to open up a luft for his king. And by the way, if queen g5 then f4 will follow, and if rook takes e5 then check, and then rook takes f8. Yeah, again, uh, there is no defense. So in the game f5 was played, and there comes another beautiful shot. Can you find white's next move? Uh, ready? In here Katishonek played knight takes d5. How do you like this move, guys? Uh, now if uh, queen takes d5, then queen h6 check followed by bishop c4, but like he's losing his queen. In the game we see c takes d5 and a question arises, how should white proceed? And here we go, this is going to be the logical continuation of that knight sacrifice, rook c7 check. Now can you understand the idea of that knight d5 move. White managed to open up the c-file and intrude it inside opponent's camp. Now if rook e7, then queen h6 check, and then queen g5. No way out. Uh, in the game black accepted the rook sacrifice and queen h6 check, king f7, rook takes f8. This time white is sacrificing the second rook. Yeah, just a marvelous game, right? Two rook sacrifices followed, after which white is managing to win black queen. Uh, of course black has two rooks against the queen, but uh, let's not forget that black king looks very vulnerable, defenseless, and victory is just a matter of moves. Also white has two extra pawns, yeah after queen takes d5 white now gains two extra pawns and at this point resignation followed because black has no hope of saving the game. A very, very nice attack by Katishonek, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. As this was a correspondence game, Katishonek analyzed it thoroughly and played perfectly. Uh, in the end, the chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for white. There is a forced mate in 4 and as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.